Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. It is Wednesday and I always do my Q&A. <laughs> so this one is going to be a bit of a long video. There's not that many questions. I um, got six questions, but the questions kind of brought me to kind of pull out a lot of books. I want to show a lot of books in this video. So there's going to be a lot of stuff. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically show you um, great big portions of my collection in this video. I'm going to show you uh, some pulps <laughs> because somebody has been asking me over and over every week. They ask me, oh, can you show some pulps? Can you show some pulps? And I said, uh, they wore me down and I'm going to show some pulps in this video. Um, somebody asked me some other stuff that requires a whole bunch of comics. Um, so there's going to be a lot <laughs> in this video. It's just going to be a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah, just stay tuned for that. So I just want to quickly explain what this is. It's my Q and A video where every week people ask me questions and every week I will follow up the next week with those answers to those questions. And, um, if you want to have your question answered and I will pretty much do whatever you want you know you can ask me anything um you can put the comment below and i will answer your question and you know you can ask me anything i i you know try to keep a comic related um but uh you know ask me whatever you want and um the other thing is you know this channel not the biggest channel out there but you know i will promote whatever channels ask me questions because I really do want this community to grow stronger and I say this every every week that I really want to help the community grow and um, I hope that by shouting out other channels that I help you gain some followers. So um, without any further ado let's get into the questions and we'll start with Rocket Fighter 8. Now Rocket Fighter 8 asked me this question three weeks ago and <laughs> I've been answering it each week uh, because it's kind of set out that way and the way the question works is this he basically wants me to name uh, three comic series uh, from each generation so first week I did um, the 1940s and then the second week I did the 1950s and this week I'm going to do the 1960s which comics would I have bought in the 1960s if I could just pick three three titles which three titles would I have bought um, and with that I'll show you uh, three titles that I would have probably bought um, knowing me so um, I was a big indies fan in the 90s and I really got into uh, a series uh, of books called uh, from Malibu so they produce Supreme they produce Prime uh, they produce Mantra and a whole bunch of other comics, okay? And I was really into all of them. I just, I collected, I actually got the complete collection of Malibu because, <laughs> and it's one of those collections that's totally worthless now. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was one of those things <laughs> um, where it just, you know, didn't go anywhere. But um, it was just... Um, a thing that I got into because I like independent comics. I like the independent smaller press comics. Also got into Image. I collected all Spawn and all that kind of stuff. So taking my my kind of mindset uh, and going back into the 60s, well, even though Marvel was around for longer, that it wasn't really independent, uh, a small press. It was kind of the, the new guy on the block in terms of being called Marvel. Um, you know, before it was Atlas Timely, um, and it was really an attempt to bring, you know, to save the publisher that they kind of went into this new, um, new name, Marvel, and also into a thing where they, they were producing stuff that was very, very focused on superheroes. They really want to focus on, and a new type of superhero. So traditional superheroes are kind of like Superman, Batman, um, uh, Captain Marvel. Um, but they wanted to take it a different way. And 
you got to think of the kind of time period where um, we get, we're sort of leaving the atomic age, we're kind of moving into that silver age, um, and that whole idea of um, having, uh, you know, kind of mutant powers was kind of the cool thing at that time. And um, so that led into several titles. And the first one, the most obvious one, is um, Spider-Man. And I just brought one of my favorite villains' first appearances from Spider-Man. And that's uh, Spider-Man number 14. So I would have collected Spider-Man. Definitely would have collected Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man is totally awesome. And probably if I lived in the 60s, I would have collected every single Spider-Man issue. Mint off the press. I would have just kept them... Uh, as minty and pressy as you know, as possible, um, but because I I really do love the character, I think he's really great. Um, I actually have behind me, you know, his first appearance and his first uh, title, but um, I figured I'd show this one because you know just to show you that I really do love Spider Man. A lot of my collection, I have a whole long box just devoted to um, to Spider Man, and I actually even have a whole section of my wall in my um, entryway that's devoted to Spider-Man. Like, actually, two rows. <laughs> it's like, I really do really like Spider-Man as a character. So um, that would definitely be one of the ones I would pick. Another one I would pick, and going into that more mutant, uh, you know, Spider-Man is a mutant in his own way because he's been mutated by this genetic spider, you know, mix. Um, another mutant series I would have loved uh, would be X-Men. Um, now, X-Men, funny thing was, it wasn't as popular as another series that I'm going to mention as well, but um, but X-Men would have definitely been one that I would have loved. I, I, I really, I like the idea of, like, the, the variety of characters, um, and I would have loved X-Men. So this is X-Men number two. I have X-Men number one on the wall behind me, um, but this is actually the first appearance of the Vanisher, <laughs> which is a, sort of a non-major character. Um, but, you know, um, X-Men number two, I just, you know, I really love X-Men. I think X-Men, X-Men, I have three, <laughs> like, like whole uh, sections of wall devoted just to X-Men. And I have a, a, almost a long box and a half just of X-Men titles. I, I, I really enjoy X-Men. So, um, definitely be one of the ones that I would have picked up. Um, so, and, you know, the 60s, I really do feel like it was Marvel's time to shine. And um, I would have picked up a third title. My third title choice would have been Fantastic Four. So this is uh, Fantastic Four number four, which is the first Submariner, um, Silver Age. So... You know, I, I, I really like the Fantastic Four. I actually like the Fantastic Four more than X-Men. Uh, not as much as Spider-Man, but more than X-Men. I, I, and I really do like X-Men, so that's saying a lot when I say this. Um, but Fantastic Four is definitely a, a really great series. Um, you know, it's one of those series that um, it's really got really awesome storytelling. And... They, you know, they have time travel, they have cool characters. Like, one of my favorite Marvel villains came from X-Men, you know, uh, Doctor Doom. And I have his first appearance right behind me as well. So, you know, I, I love X, uh, Fantastic Four. So it's one of those series that I'm actually trying to get kind of a run of. Um, and I actually, you know, I've been getting, I got the first five issues, kind of work, or first six issues, kind of working my way up to try to get the 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 run of X-Men or X-Men Fantastic 4. So another series that I really would have liked. So those would have been my three picks. X-Men, Spider-Man and Fantastic 4. So purely Marvel. If I only had to choose three titles from the 60s. Sorry DC, I and sorry my Wonder Woman. I would have you know, I actually liked Silver Age Wonder Woman, but um yeah, I would have probably gone into uh, Marvel. I would have been like, wow, this is really cool stuff. So um, that's where I would have gone. So that's question number one. Um, 
Number two question is from JR. And do you make a distinction, a distinction between golden age and platinum age? Or do you consider everything pre-code golden age? If you do separate them, what books do you, do you have and what would you be, what would be considered platinum age? Okay. So for those that don't know, <laughs> uh, golden age actually started in 1939 and it's debatable. Some say 1940, some say 1939. I'm going to say 1940. <laughs> I'm sort of pushing it a little bit. Um, and, um, Platinum Age was really the time before that. And it's really the dawn of the book, the, the comic book, um, as a, not even a, like, not a regular size comic uh, that we have today, but kind of books or like um, more uh, like hardcover things, um, more like uh, pamphlets, kind of very different styles and not, not really the conformity uh, that we have today in terms of the, the format for comics. Um, and usually they cite the Platinum Age as starting at um, 1897. And before that is kind of Victorian Age, if you get into that kind of, <laughs> like, you know, going back a bit. Um, even though Victoria died in 1901. Um, <laughs> besides the point. But the point is, uh, from... The Platinum Age is really defined from 1897 to 1938 to 39. And it really depends on whose opinion. I'm going to take 39 only because uh, I'm going to show you my entire Platinum Age collection. And this is going to be part a very short part of the video because I don't have much Platinum Age. Uh, I have one book uh, that is truly Platinum Age. And this is The Captain and the Kids. And it's in really rough shape. Uh, it's not even complete. I'd say it's a, <laughs> it's really rough. Uh, uh, I put hot chocolate on it when I was a kid. <laughs> like there's a, I put a cup of hot chocolate and kind of stained the book. Um, and I treated this really poorly. It was from my grandmother. She gave it to me, and I didn't really know how to treat comics at the time. And uh, you know, it's, it's in really rough shape. Um, sadly, so. Uh, had I kept it in better shape, it would have been nice. But I do love this book because it was from my grandmother. And um, it was kind of the first major comics, that the comic that I ever got. So uh, this is from 1935. So um, I even drew on the back. <laughs> it's like, what was I thinking? Okay, so yeah. So this is uh, kind of what a Platinum Age book would look like. And it, as I said, it's a book. It's hardcover. Another comic book that I have, and I recently got this, is uh, New York World's Fair. And this is, as I said, kind of iffy. Some people, would, some would say more Golden Age, but I'm going to say it's Silver Age, uh, not Silver, Platinum Age, because uh, I'm going to make that distinction. So um, 1939, <laughs> um, and um, just a really great book. This is the first appearance of the Sandman. So this is my uh, Platinum Age collection. Two books. <laughs> I actually have a third book on its way that is also Platinum Age. So that will be coming soon. And I might have like some uh, other books that are maybe considered Platinum Age. They're really at that cusp as well. Um, so yeah. So this would be my Platinum Age collection. Very, very small. <laughs> Just the two books for now. Uh, the third book will be in a future unboxing. Uh, it's still at Heritage right now. Uh, I just won it on the weekend. And it's uh, The Funnies, number one. Major book. <laughs> Has the first appearance of uh, a bunch of characters. Like uh, Ali Oop and uh, oh, a bunch of characters. I, I can't remember them all. It's like, So it's kind of a major book. I was super happy to win that at auction. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that that is a book that I'm getting on um, a future unboxing. So probably in the next three weeks, I'll ship all my stuff from um, from Heritage. So that's it. That's it for my <laughs> Platinum Age uh, collection. Um, next is from Earl Morrow, 
Mar Mario 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 Okay, <laughs> I'm totally mispronouncing his name. Earl Mario, I think it is. Um, and um, I discovered Matt Baker by viewing your channel. I love and appreciate his work. Thank you for turning me on to his work. What covers did Matt Baker draw that had black characters, female or male, de depicted on them? Okay, so that's actually something interesting and maybe a little bit racist. <laughs> I don't know. Um, there's not that many characters in the Golden Age that were black that were featured on the covers. Uh, there are like comics like Negro comics and stuff like that that do feature prominently um, uh, black characters. And there were like uh, young allies that had like, you know, uh, certain some black characters. Um, even uh, Captain Marvel had a um, steamboat who did make a cover appearance. Uh, but there weren't that many <laughs> uh, black characters on the covers of comics. And the funny thing is, uh, Matt Baker really didn't do that many uh, black characters on the covers. So um, I'm going to show you a couple things and it'll be hopefully interesting. Um, so we got... Nightmare number uh, 13. This is a Matt Baker cover. And this is actually not black. <laughs> they're not black. They're green. Um, but I just wanted to show you that, you know, there were non-white, I guess, <laughs> characters that he did. And it's these kind of like, uh, like uh, characters at the bottom there. So, um, so yeah. So this this is a Matt Baker, really great cover, one of my favorite covers by Matt Baker. Tell you the truth, um, just Nightmare number thirteen, and we got this one actually does feature black characters. <laughs> okay, um, this is a really great Matt Baker cover. Um, it actually uh, has like these guys in the background, so they're in the background. It has a Rula. That's Rula. This is All Top Comics number 14. This was mentioned in The Seduction of the Innocent. Um, there's actually a scene where uh, some black men get murdered, <laughs> like killed, uh, and they're hanging, like their corpses are hanging, and that's the reason it was mentioned in The Seduction of the Innocent. Uh, so just as, you know, Matt Baker was a brilliant artist, just an amazing artist, um, African-American artist or black artist, uh, whatever way you want to say it. But just a really great artist, um, you know. And this is kind of one of his, you know, what I like about the Golden Age. And um, and Matt Baker kind of encapsulate, encapsulates this really, really well. Um, is if you look at modern covers, modern covers are almost like uh, figure pieces, where they'll show like one character, maybe like maybe a couple characters, and they're just sort of they're just posing. It's just like they're posing and it looks good. Well, okay, that that's the cover. Um, in the Golden Age, every cover, or the, when they, they made covers, they really tried to make them in such a way that they told a story. And that's what this cover does for me. You got these guys in the background. He's got a whip. <laughs> he's, and he's like, I think they're like chasing after them. Uh, and she's riding a bull. And she's riding at side saddle. Maybe she's trying to get onto the bull. And you got this woman panicking in the front. You know, it really tells a story. It's like all this kind of craziness. And you're sort of wondering what is going on. So, you know, that's what I love about the Golden Age covers. They were just much more dynamic. Um, and Matt Baker was brilliant for that. And if you look, look at his romance books, oh my goodness, they're awesome. His romance books are some of his best stuff. And it's usually stuff that's fairly affordable, actually. Um, and, you know, he, he'll have things like where it kind of has like, oh, you know, she's meeting some guy and like, you know, it's like some kind of like secret affair or something. It's really interesting. So, um, uh, you know, Matt Baker does some really awesome art. But this is one example where there's actually black characters on the cover. And I want to show you another one. And this one is often misconstrued as being racist. And actually, if you watch my video that I'm going to be posting tomorrow, 
<laughs> so you're actually seeing it in the future. Like we're seeing the future. <laughs> um, I'm actually doing the unboxing for this tomorrow. So you're seeing it early. Uh, so pretend, be excited when you see it tomorrow because it's really, really an awesome comic. And it's a Matt Baker cover. And it's this one. Crown Comics number three. Now this is a black character. He is depicted as kind of freaky. <laughs> But he's a voodoo witch doctor. He's an evil guy. And they're really... It's not that they're trying to say, oh, black people are evil or anything like that. They're just saying that this guy is evil. So they make him look evil. Okay? Um, and, uh, you know, that's one of the things that people always misconstrue. Like, when they look at Golden Age stuff, they always say, oh, it's so racist because, you know, they, they look how they draw black people. And no, that's not what was happening here. <laughs> um... This is that this guy is evil and they're trying to make him look evil, trying to make him look like a voodoo evil guy. Now, the hero in this story was a, a creation by Matt Baker. And this is a Matt Baker cover. Um, the hero is named Ruda. OK, and Ruda is a black. The very first black hero, not really superhero, but hero. And basically, he saves his tribe, and uh, he's just a really good guy. Now, the funny thing is, uh, often, as I said, they really didn't show that many black characters on covers, to tell you the truth. And Avuda, Avuda uh, even though he's a black character, he's an African, <laughs> he, he um, doesn't appear on the cover as being black often. They'll generally show him as white on the cover. And then in the interior art, they'll show him as being black. Different times, different sensibilities. They didn't show black characters that often on the covers. <laughs> just the way it was. Um, I'm not excusing it. I'm just saying that that's the way it was. But this is a very important comic. Um, you'll notice that it's a, <laughs> a special, special little thing. Well, this is from the Promise Collection. This is a pedigree uh, comic, and that's why it's in that gold label. And I'm super happy to have this in my collection. And it is uh, just a really great Matt Baker comic. And also, it is kind of a cool comic just for the fact that it is the bla first black super. Is, well, I keep on saying superhero, but he's first hero. Uh, he didn't really have superpowers, but um, he was definitely a hero. So. I really like this book. So this is um, Crown Comics number three. So those are some of the examples that I have. I mean, there's probably other examples out there of Matt Baker art. Um, I believe uh, the Seven uh, Seven Seas comics, I think there is one where it's sort of a maybe a dark-skinned, uh, or maybe not super dark, but slightly dark-skinned <laughs> woman that's on the cover. Um... So yeah, so there's a couple uh, others out there. He, as I said, Matt Baker really didn't draw that many uh, black characters on the covers. It's just the way it was. Okay, so um, hope that was interesting. I, I, uh, you know, I, I, Matt Baker, one of my favorite artists. So I really love the guy. He's just awesome. Okay, um, next question is from Star Podlog, and Star pod trek podcast okay so he's this is she's a podcaster and uh you should check out her channel uh star pod log and star pod trek podcast so just they focus on you know star wars and uh not star wars but uh star trek kind of uh podcasting uh what are your some of your favorite tv related comics that you have in your collection <laughs> okay so I actually have a huge amount of comics related to TV series. And I actually not even bringing them all, but um, I brought a bunch. Uh, this is the long part of the video because I'm going to show you a whole bunch of TV related comics because I really do. Um, I love collecting based on what I watched. So I'm like, I'm the typical, like, uh, you know, you know, in comics, comic collectors hate this when, you know, when a movie comes out and it's it, the all of a sudden certain comics will spike in price 
because all the kind of noobs out there, like the non-comic people, will basically uh, start latching on to those characters, right? They'll say, oh, I really like Spider-Man. I never heard of that character before. <laughs> you know? And then they start buying the comics just because the new Spider-Man movie is out. Um, that is a typical situation, right? And, you know, you have the, the diehard comic collectors and who, you know, might not even watch the movies. They, they're so focused on the comics themselves and that's what they really love. Um, but then you have these kind of people who are really just buying the comics because they love the movie or TV series. I'm kind of like that in a way. I, I, I admit some guilt in that because uh, a lot of the characters that I buy, a lot of the characters that I love, are because I watch them on TV, watch them in the movies. And, you know, I, I do read the comics. I do love reading comics, but <laughs> I just, there's so many characters that I really got into because I saw them first on TV. So that's a bit of a confession. Uh, I'm one of those lame-o people that, <laughs> that buy it because, oh, the new movie's out. Um, so, yeah. But with that said, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of comics related to TV series that I loved and I bought the comics based on loving those TV series. So I got a big stack here and, and then I got a bunch of slabs that I'm going to show. So the first one is I, I really love uh, sci-fi and mystery and kind of Twilight Zone stuff. So this is Twilight Zone. <laughs> This is the very first, uh, this is um, four, Dell 4 Color 1, uh, 1173, or 70, I think it's, yeah, 73. Um, this is the very first appearance of the Twilight Zone in comics. So uh, it's got Ron Serling in the, in the picture there. It's just a really, you know, mysterious kind of cover. So, you know, I really like this comic. I I'm super happy to get it in my collection. <laughs> so that's the first one. And keeping with that weird sci-fi kind of mystery stories, X-Men, uh, not X-Men, uh, X-Files. I really loved X-Files. And this story, this comic actually, I missed it when it came out. And I got from two on, I actually bought them right off the rack uh, from number issue number two and forward. This is number one. My girlfriend at the time, she knew that I was really into collecting comics and she actually went to Toronto to pick this up for me. <laughs> and I didn't live in, I lived in Nova Scotia at the time. So, uh, and I broke up with her afterwards. <laughs> not, not right afterwards, but a few months later. Uh, so kind of sad in a way. Uh, but she did pick me up this comic, uh, and I really do appreciate this comic. I feel bad that I broke up with her, but, uh, you know, I thought it was pretty awesome. And you can see, even at the time, this was like, you know, a pretty new comic at the time, like less than a year old. And it was like $27 at the time. So this is like a mint copy, though. It's like a really nice copy. Um, but, you know, they charged a lot. You know, there was a lot of hype around that comic at the time. Um, another comic series and I, I i mentioned this when i did the unboxing for this uh comic the, um i used to watch um when i went to um shopping with my mom she would leave me in like little photo like it was like a little booth that they would play like cartoons and one of the cartoons that i really loved was uh terry toons and uh, not terry toons but mighty mouse <laughs> this is terry toons number 38 the first appearance of mighty mouse so really great TV related uh, comic. Uh, I love these cartoons. I was a big cartoon guy. I, you know, um, I was really lazy and I generally sleep in, <laughs> but I would somehow force myself to wake up on the weekends to watch Saturday morning cartoons. So I'd always watch uh, like, you know, all the different uh, Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, another cartoon series that I watched, and it's I actually feel bad <laughs> watching this because it was such a lame series in a way, but uh, was Beavis and Butthead. I actually enjoyed Beavis and Butthead. Uh, they were just so pathetic, <laughs> so lame. Uh, I actually enjoyed watching them, sadly enough. Um, so yeah, Beavis and Butthead, 
And I got this right off the newsstand uh, at the time. When it came out, I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. So I picked it up. So that's Beavis and Butthead. I actually have two copies of that. So that's my duplicate. I'm going to probably sell it. Um, so yeah. Uh, then I have um, another <laughs> kind of similar time period, like where the co cartoons were kind of gross in a way. They were kind of uh, silly and gross. And this was kind of in that line, Ren and Stimpy. Um, and this one is actually pretty awesome uh, as a comic itself. Because it, you know, it comes in this kind of uh, bag, uh, free air fowler enclosed. And basically, if you remove it from the bag, it stinks. It literally stinks. Like, I mean, I've heard comic shops complaining about this comic because what'll happen is if you put this comic without the bag <laughs> uh, and you put it in with other comics, it will make all the comics stink. <laughs> so this is one of those comic destroyers and what's really cool is if you um look at the bottom here i gotta kind of put these down for a sec if you look at the bottom it says open the bag a secret message on cover and if you actually remove the bag it actually says you remove the bag you know you you ruin the value of the comic you idiot <laughs> <laughs> it's like so awesome so really great uh humor making fun of comic collectors i thought that was quite good uh so yeah so many many funny things about that comic um and then we got spongebob sort of in the same whole genre of uh comic and tv watching uh this is spongebob number one i didn't get this at the time i picked this up later so i picked this up like a year or two ago uh, I really love Spongebob, actually. It's one of those ones that um, I, I enjoy Spongebob uh, because my kids watch it and, you know, you sort of end up watching the same stuff that they do. So I really like Spongebob. A series that I really enjoyed when it came out was uh, Gargoyles. <laughs> really br brilliant series. Like, like really great. Like, I, I rewatched it. It wasn't as... I found it wasn't as awesome as I used to believe, but it's still a great series. I, I, I you know, it's really awesome. So Gargoyles number one, actually, I bought no, I bought number two and afterwards off the newsstand. I missed this one and I ended up picking this up later. So um, this is a really great series though, uh, Gargoyles. Another series that I watched and I was sort of iffy about it when I watched it back in the 80s uh was um thundercats you know uh and you know you got uh <laughs> you'd always go thundercat thundercat you know, I was, <laughs> I don't know. so yeah so uh thundercats so uh lion-o and all those characters right so this is thundercats number one so yeah so um and then a series that i really a cartoon series that i really enjoy now uh, and I kind of like, you know, is, uh, Bob's Burgers. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying this series. Really good series, cartoon series, awesome series. And when I saw that they had a comic, picked it up. <laughs> I just really like Bob's Burgers. So really well, you know, there's so much stuff nowadays where they kind of trash the, the nuclear family. And Bob's Burgers is kind of the opposite of that, where they really do love each other as a family. And I find that very refreshing. So I really enjoy Bob's Burgers. Uh, another one is, <laughs> this one was, I don't know why they played this. This is such a, it was, it was one that, uh, as a kid, I only had two channels, two and a half channels. I had uh, two English channels and a French channel that would sort of be coming in and out. Uh, it was just sort of a half channel. Um, and one of the series that they would always have was Hercules. And this is a different Hercules than the Marvel Hercules. It's this Hercules. And you got, and this, this character would always repeat himself. He would always say everything twice. It was kind of annoying. Um, but, you know, I actually didn't mind the series as a kid. Um, and Hercules, he had this, like, ring. And he didn't have his powers until he kind of charged up. So um, it was kind of a cool series kind of like very uh, uh, low production value, I would say, uh, a TV series. So this is The Mighty Hercules, okay? <laughs> um, a series that I liked when I was really, really young uh, was H 
Hong Kong, Hong Kong Fui. And it was this kind of dog <laughs> that would go around chopping everything. He was like a, like a detective kind of like a uh, dog uh, that would just go around chopping things and, you know, doing Kung Fu. <laughs> and it was kind of silly. Um, I enjoyed it as a kid. So this is Hong Kong Fui number one. So a lot of these are the first appearances of the characters because I really love the characters. Um, next one I really, really enjoyed was Bullwinkle. And this is uh, Rocky and his friends. And this is the first appearance of Bullwinkle. It's also the first appearance of um, uh, Pe Peabody and Sherman. And also uh, the first appearances of... Um, uh, oh... Why do I always forget their names? Um, Natasha and Boris. <laughs> See, I, I remember. Okay, so yeah. Uh, so a bunch of first appearances in this book. So really great book. This is uh, Dell Four Color uh, 1128. So a great book to have. And then we got Hardy Boys. Um, Hardy Boys is one of those few shows that I did watch but not much. Um, and it was one of those shows that I, I never seemed to catch the end. Like, I'd always, like, be watching it and be really into it and, like, oh, this is really cool. And sometimes even a little bit scared because sometimes they seemed a little scary, some of the episodes of Hardy Boys. Like, when I was really young. I mean, I'm, like, I was really young when I watched this. Um, and for some reason, my mom would always be like, hey, you're watching too much TV, you know, come to dinner or something. And I'd always miss the end. I'd always miss that last 10 minutes of the show. So uh, Hardy Boys was uh, another show. I, I really feel like I should go back and watch the Hardy Boys. So that was uh, Dell Four Color 760s, which, 760, which is the first appearance of the Hardy Boys. Uh, another show that I really loved <laughs> and I drove my parents crazy with this one is Alvin and the Chipmunks. So this is the first appearance of Alvin and the Chipmunks. Actually, I'm not sure. This might not be. Um, I have a different book. This is the just the Halloween special one. Um, but uh, this is uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks number seven. I actually have number one. I didn't. I realized I grabbed the wrong book. Um, but Alvin and the Chipmunks, they would have these so this is not really a TV story as much as, but they did have a TV series, uh, which I watched. Um, they had these cassettes and I got a bunch of them where it was basically the Alvin and the Chipmunks and they would sing. And I'd force my parents in when we go for long drives to play Alvin and the Chipmunks on, you know, on these cassettes. And it was just, you know, going, you know, as an adult, listening to Alvin and the Chipmunks is pretty annoying. <laughs> I realized it must have drove my parents crazy. I'm not sure how they had the endurance to, you know, withstand it. It was just like, you know, basically it sounded like, you know, uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks, you know, this high pitched, uh, you know, singing. <laughs> so it was kind of kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I used to I used to really like Alvin and the Chipmunks as a kid. Another series that I watched a few episodes of and I just thought it was kind of cool was Space Ghost. Uh, so this is uh, Space Ghost first appearance in uh, Gold Key Comics. This is Space Ghost number one. It's kind of cool series. So yeah, as I said, I brought a lot of stuff. So you asked me about my favorite TV series. I love so many TV series. <laughs> I just brought a ton of stuff. Um, so... I'm going to show you some more cartoon ones because I love cartoons. Uh, the Jetsons was another series. This is Jetsons number one. And this is from 1963. So this is just a really great a comic. I, I love that I have their first appearance. I was a big fan of the Jetsons. I love anything where it was like the future. Like I, I as a kid, I'd always remember like the year 2000 as being this futuristic kind of time period. And I, I thought the Jetsons were from the year 2000 in a way as a kid, uh, where we'd all be like, you know, living in like, uh, like, you know, space and like, you know, flying around in little spaceships like this. So this is my, like the Jetsons kind of encapsulated what I envisioned the future would look like. And I loved thinking about the future. 
so uh, this is the <laughs> the first appearance of the Jetsons in comics, which is Jetsons number one from Gold Key. Uh, another series that I really loved uh, was Buck Rogers. And this is Buck Rogers number one. I really liked, uh, you know, the spaceships. I actually even had the model kit of Buck Rogers spaceship. Really loved Buck Rogers, uh, you know, uh, and the little robots and stuff like that. I, I, I really enjoyed uh, Buck Rogers. So that was a really great series. Another series that I really liked, <laughs> and it's kind of funny, I, I had so many weird childhood stories about this, uh, is um, Six Million Dollar Man. So I had even, like, as a kid, you know, this series, this show was so popular. Like, this is back in the 70s. And whenever you would run as a kid back in the 70s, you'd go, <laughs> it's like you make that bionic man sounds. And like, whenever you jump, you make that like leaping sound. I was, you know, I was really into the sound effects as a kid because of the Six Million Dollar Man. I loved it. I even had the Play Doh set for <laughs> Six Million Dollar Man. And I didn't actually pick this comic up until much later. Uh, a bit of nostalgia by. So this is, uh, you know, the first appearance of the Six Million Dollar Man. This is from 1976. And this is Six Million Dollar Man number one from Carlton Comics. Charlton. Uh, another series, cartoon series that I really liked um, was DuckTales. Really great series. I really enjoy it. Like, I love Uncle Scrooge. I grew up reading Uncle Scrooge comics. So, um, you know, I really enjoyed when they made the animated series for DuckTales. Just really great, awesome series. And this is the first uh, comic devoted to DuckTales. So DuckTales number one from Gladstone. So that was an awesome comic. And sort of in that DuckTales kind of vein um, was another series that I thought was really great. It didn't last that long. But it was uh, Darkwing Duck. I really enjoyed Darkwing, Darkwing Duck. I thought he was really kind of a cool character. And this is Darkwing Duck number one. I really enjoyed Darkwing Duck. Now, a series that I didn't watch when it came out, but I ended up watching later and actually enjoying it as an adult, um, uh, was Elf. And I actually like quirky comics so i'm going to show you i have elf number one which i didn't bring but um this is elf number 48 and i just love this comic <laughs> so this is like a tv related one but it's also a quirky comic related one and it's the one where he is molesting a seal <laughs> it's like one of those comics that just is uh really warped and i love it uh so it's like um do not do not buy if the safety seal is uh, is missing. <laughs> and it says actually at the bottom, note, no an animals were injured during the making of this cover. <laughs> I thought that was just really great. Elf number 48, really awesome. This is a pretty rare and uh, very desirable book, actually. I love it, though. Uh, just very um, quirky. <laughs> Another cartoon series that I really enjoyed um, is Speedy Gonzales. This is Speedy Gonzales number one. Uh, this is uh, Dell Four Color uh, uh, 1084. And this is not the first appearance of Speedy Gonzales. I, I do another video where I show his first appearance. But this is, um, you know, his first titled series. This is a really great... Um, great book i just really love speedy gonzalez he was just so awesome he would you know arriba arriba <laughs> just really great character i really enjoyed speedy gonzalez um another series that um when i was in grade two one or two i'd come home for lunch i'd walk like literally maybe two three kilometers like from school to back i'd actually run back but um I'd run back in order to watch this series. It was um, Planet uh, Battle of the Planets. And it was all these characters, they would be like sort of dressed in like these kind of bird suits. And they would just basically, uh, you know, fly around in these little spaceships. And, you know, it was kind of cool. I, I really enjoyed it. I actually don't really remember much about it, 
from that time. I watched it recently, <laughs> and I, it was a very it was a very different experience. So, um, so yeah, I really loved this series as a kid. I remember eating like um, like canned food. Uh, like my mom would prepare like or my babysitter would prepare something uh, and then I'd have this like canned food and I'd be watching this on the TV <laughs> while eating for my lunch break. Uh, so I got that. Another series that I really really loved as a kid that would actually come out right after. So that would be the first one that you'd watch and maybe kind of catch only half of the half of the episode. Uh, and then the other episode that would come out after would be Star Blazers. So it would be first <laughs> those that, you know, those two episodes would come out next to each other. And this is Star Blazers, number one. I really like Star Blazers. It was the uh, battleship Yoramanto, you know, and they'd fly around like on this big battleship that they resurrected from the uh, from the Second World War and converted into a battle starship. <laughs> <laughs> it was like just a really great series. Uh, it's pretty crazy. So this is uh, Star Blazers number one. Now I kind of mentioned like a bunch of comic related series like uh, Ren and Stimpy and Beavis and Butthead and all those ones. Uh, one that is kind of obvious is uh, The Simpsons. And I wanted to show this comic again. <laughs> this is uh, X-Men special number 10. And Xmas special number 10. This is the first appearance of Bart Simpson. So I actually have the Simpsons number one, and I'll show that as well. But I just figured I'd show this one first, Bart Simpson. Um, I really love sci fi stuff, so um, I couldn't help but have this one on my list. I, you know, I grew up watching, I memorized every single episode of Star Star Trek. I, I watch Star Trek all the time. This is Star Trek number one, and it's in really crappy grade. I got screwed over when I bought this. I paid way too much for it. I paid like 50 bucks or something like that, um, you know, because the guy was a jerk. And this is in really bad shape. It's like a one or one five or something. It's like in really beaten up shape. Um, so yeah, so this is, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, a comic that I bought way too much. I paid too much for it because I really loved Star Trek. I was a big fan of Spock and Kirk and all the characters. Um, you know, I just thought they were... The dynamic between Spock, Kirk, and Bones was just... Hasn't been ever recreated on any show on TV. That dynamic was just brilliant. You have the straight man. You have the comedic one. And you have that kind of guy that's sort of like the referee in between. And really, it's between Bones and uh, Spock, who, you know, that would be the dynamic with the straight man and the comedic guy. But, and Kirk is kind of that authoritative, like, uh, guy that's sort of in between. And I, I thought that dynamic was very, very interesting. And really, I haven't seen it ever recaptured in any series since. I, I just think the, the chemistry was there. It was definitely a magic that happened with Star Trek. And I really enjoyed... Um, I just enjoyed that they did stuff uh, and they they really were exploring. And I think that was what was interesting about the original Star Trek. Like that was one thing that drove me nuts about Star Trek a generation, like generations, um, a next generation, I should say. Um, you know, I really did like Star Trek Next Generation, but the thing that drove me nuts is they, they had this prime directive and they had they, they were a little bit more restricted. And they didn't have that kind of fun, little bit, little bit childlike innocence of just exploring and like, you know, do, you know, going out like, you know, they'd land on planets and they wouldn't check to see if the air is breathable <laughs> or not. They would just literally walk out onto these planets and stuff. It was just much more innocent and naive and more interesting because they would just do silly things that were kind of cool. I, and I enjoyed Star Trek a lot. I love Star Trek. Okay, other series that I love. Uh, so almost at the bottom of the stack, I have like all my slabs to show now <laughs> of books that I, you know, of comics from TV series that I really loved. Um, Walking Dead. I mean, geez, that's just... It, the first episode of Walking Dead is like one of the best 
episodes of TV ever. I just think it's amazing, <laughs> like amazing episode. Uh, you know, just a really great, uh, you know, first episode. And I really just really enjoyed Walking Dead. I didn't even know that it was a comic until after watching the series. I was like, oh, I got to pick it up. It, hopefully I can pick it up for cheap. And it was like $2,000. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. I guess I'll have to wait on that one. <laughs> it, that was too much at the time. I ended up picking this up cheaper um because the price had sort of dipped for a while and i picked it up on the down uh so yeah so uh walking dead number one i i really love that comic though i was super excited to finally get into my collection another cartoon series that i loved uh was transformers and my parents wouldn't buy me the transformers toys and i was very sad <laughs> I really wanted, all of my friends had Transformers and they were always like, oh, they can change into so many shapes. And they were, they were, <laughs> they were always sort of bragging. And I was sort of the lame kid that didn't have any Transformers toys. So I really, uh, loved Transformers as a kid. And, um, you know, I just enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, so I later on got the comic for it. I didn't pay much for it too. It was fairly cheap. And as I mentioned, I mentioned The Simpsons. Well, here's uh, Simpsons comics number one. There's actually an earlier comic. Um, but this is, um, yeah, the, the sort of homage comic to uh, the Fantastic Four, like Fantastic Four number one. So I thought that was kind of cool. So uh, I love The Simpsons. Really great series. Um... Another series that I really enjoyed <laughs> as a kid uh, and, you know, and then rewatched with my kids when they grew up was Scooby-Doo. I love Scooby-Doo. Like, you know, I'd always loved Scooby snacks and like, you know, the, the scene where they are, they're, they're chasing after the, uh, they're chasing, they're running away from the bad guy. You know, they're supposed to be fighting bad guys, but they're running away half the time. And uh, they'd run away and there'd be the scene where they go into one room, come out another room. And the bad guy would come out and it'd be like, they would be chasing the bad guy. They, and all of a sudden the bad guy would be chasing, you know, it'd always get confused. Right. Um, so, I, and then it was always like, you know, it was always some really silly explanation <laughs> of what the bad guy was and they would remove the mask and it was like, Oh, it was Bob all along. And and he, they always say, oh, I would have gotten away for, with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. You know, <laughs> it's like meddling kids. You know, it's like, it's just such a great a series, a very iconic series, I think, of the 70s, 60s, 70s. So this is from 1970. It's uh, Scooby-Doo number one. Very rare comic, especially in high grade. If you can find this comic in high grade, definitely you got some money on your hands. So that's a really, really pricey book. Another series that I loved as a kid, and I'd actually um, uh, video these, like, I, you know, on the VHS, you could record all the, you know, and I, uh, you know, you could record your TV. So I'd record all the episodes, and I tried to get like a collection of uh, all the episodes of this cartoon, and it was the Smurfs. I loved the Smurfs as a kid. I just really enjoyed uh, the dynamic of Gargamel and the Smurfs. And I always wanted Gargamel to eat one Smurf. <laughs> I know it's a little bit morbid, um, but I always wanted him just, you know, how does he know that the Smurfs taste good? <laughs> you know? I was always curious about that. And do they really, you know, convert into gold? Uh, you know, I was always kind of curious about that. So um, <laughs> I uh, maybe a little bit warped in terms of my Smurf uh, watching, but I really did enjoy the Smurfs. There's a bunch of episodes that I really loved. And I'd rewatch them a million times. And I remember like uh, my videotape of the Smurfs, like it was just unwatchable because if you watch a videotape over and over again, it just becomes like blurry and kind of like very sketchy, <laughs> just iffy. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the Smurfs. And this is my copy of Smurfs uh, number one. This is actually the first uh, true comic of the Smurfs. Now there were earlier uh kind of like digest magazines that came out with the Smurfs that I actually have as well. Uh, but uh, this is the first comic. So this is from 1982. Another series that I really enjoy now 
and this is a, you know, it was a comic first, then became a TV series, is Invincible. Really brilliant series. Definitely worth watching. Um, Invincible, and this is Invincible number one. I I kind of picked this one up because I always saw it in Comic Tom's background. I was like, what is Invincible? And I thought it looked kind of very iffy, <laughs> actually. But I, I figured, hey, I'll you know, give it a try. And I picked it up and I started reading the comic series and I realized, oh, this is actually pretty awesome. Um, just a very different uh, storytelling of, uh, of, you know, superheroes. Like a very interesting way of telling a story. And the funny thing is the guy that created Invincible is the same guy that created The Walking Dead. So yeah, just a... Um, uh you know really great uh series uh robert kirkman is the, the creator uh just a you know really great series definitely recommend if you haven't watched it and the last one and i couldn't you know get through like a whole bunch of tv series if i didn't mention this book is the flintstones this is the very first flintstones this is del giant um number 48 and this is the very first appearance of the Flintstones. I really love the Flintstones. You know, yabba dabba do. <laughs> like, I'd watch them every, you know. Uh, for some reason, every day they would have it, like, um, air on TV. Like, they would just play reruns and stuff, like, of the, of the Flintstones. And, you know, as a kid, I always had a crush on Betty. I always thought she was kind of sexy. <laughs> I don't know why. I think everyone did, maybe. Um, so, yeah. So, um and I, you know, I always liked, uh, actually, you know, I, I liked Bam Bam and all those kind of characters as well, you know. And I always liked how technology worked. In a weird way, I always saw the Flintstones and steampunk is very similar. And I'll explain that in a weird way. So steampunk is like, what if you use steam to create whatever cool things that we have now? Like, you know, steam flight and steam whatever. Well... Flintstones is kind of the same thing, but instead of having steam power, you have rock power, <laughs> like Stone Age power, basically. And I thought it was always interesting how they would use like different animals and stuff. Like I loved when they would take a picture and it'd be like a little bird pecking at the stone and like it'd make a photograph, things like that. I really enjoyed the technology inside of the Flintstones. I thought it was really great. So I was a big fan of the Flintstones. So that was my very long-winded answer <laughs> to that question about um, my favorite uh, TV comics. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope, um, you know, I showed a lot of first appearances in that. Um, there's some really great comics there. You know, if you ever want to create a tv oriented collection, those are some, I, these are, would be definitely some recommended titles. There are more. Like, I actually could have pulled another 20, 30, 40 books. Like, I really actually didn't pull as many books as I could have. So there was, like, the Sliders and a whole bunch of other ones that I really enjoy as series. Uh, Outer Limits, uh, Night Gallery, um, you know, uh, whole Adam's Family. I have all those. <laughs> like, I just, I, I was like, okay, I got to kind of stop because I was getting this huge stack of comics. Um, okay. So um, the next question is from Comic Book Ninja. And I mentioned this at the very beginning. He asked me, oh, show your pulps, show your pulps, show your pulps. And he, every week he asked me the same question. Okay, do you collect any pulps? <laughs> I think he even copies and pastes this question because it's the same question every time. Do you collect any pulps? A lot of them feature some really great covers by people like Alex Schomburg. If so, show some examples. And he, he, I think he posts this a few times because I think I've seen this question many times from Comic Book Ninja. So Comic Book Ninja, you wore me down. I'm going to show you some of my pulps. I'm not going to show you the entire collection because it's massive. Uh, like it's about 100 books. So I'm going to show a bunch though. So hopefully this will appease you and you won't harass me about showing pulps, showing pulps. Okay. But I, I do enjoy the question though. Um, because I like I like some of the covers. I these are pure cover buys. I don't read my pulps. Uh, some of them I actually I, I should admit that I do read some of them. But um, this is startling stories. I just think it's great. This good girl art cover. I really have to change out the bags for all my pulps. So uh, yeah, I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. Uh, 
Um, and then we got Fantastic Novels. It's like kind of a skeleton cover. And these are all from like the, the like, I would say like, these are all from the late 40s. This is from 1949. And then we got Fantastic Novels. And this is another 1949 issue. I just thought it was great. I really like uh, whenever people wear these kind of bubble helmets, I always, I have the weird thing. I love bubble helmets. <laughs> I think they're cool. And you got kind of like some space, kind of cool spaceship in the top there. I just really love the covers for these pulps. My pulps are not in the highest grade. You know, it's pulps really, the grades on them, they really didn't stay in good shape. They're really hard to get in high grades. And then we got fantastic uh, novels. Again, just another cover. And right, I'm gonna move these over. And then we got dynamic science fiction. This is uh, just a bunch of interesting things on the cover, like some bondage cover there. <laughs> just a kind of interesting cover. And that was from 1950, 50, 1950. And then we got uh, Famous Fantastic Mysteries. This is kind of a... I wish this was in better shape. It's a really great cover, though. I'm not sure if you can see, but really great cover. Uh, these Famous Fantastic Mysteries had some of the best covers. Just really great. Here's another one. I like this kind of... Almost like... Uh, like 20s style, like a flapper style. This is uh, from 1949. I bought a collection when I was, I was working at a bookstore where they sold pulps and I basically bought all of their pulps for $2 each. <laughs> so uh, I just bought a big box of them. Uh, so yeah, it was like a bookstore. And this is another one, Planet Stories. It's really great covers. And there's a lot of famous um, writers and stuff that would write for pulps. And I, you know, like um, Ray Bradbury and like, uh, you know, just a bunch of really great science fiction writers would write for these. So this is Amazing Stories, um, kind of a nude cover. The girl's kind of not really dressed. And we got the guy kind of hanging. This is a hanging cover too. So this is kind of a cool cover. So this is Amazing Stories from 1952, June 52. So that's kind of a cool one. And the backs aren't really the most interesting, just so you know. I'm not showing the backs because they're not really super interesting. Um, <laughs> so, and then we got Amazing Stories. And just just a, kind of a cool, he's got like a bazooka going on. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Um... And this one I really like. It's a. It kind of reminds me of an homage to, um, but it's actually earlier. Um, this is. I'm not sure when this is. This is 1951. Uh, this almost reminds me of crime suspense stories. You got the guy holding the head, guy with the sword, and the decapitated body on the ground. Reminds me of crime suspense stories uh, number 22. Very much so. Like this one, I have actually two copies of this, and I'll probably sell one. Um, but it, it almost reminds me, uh, like this almost th makes me think that it's the inspiration for, uh, crime suspense stories number 22, because it's the exact same situation, even the, the bloody, uh, weapon. It's not the ax that's in crime suspense stories, but it is kind of, kind of interesting. I thought that was kind of a quirky kind of... <laughs> interesting one so uh and then we got future science fiction this is another it's a nude cover because but it's a statue so i'm gonna say it's still pg <laughs> i don't know um and then we got this is from where when is this one from this is from 1950 something or 1954 so uh and then we got fantastic adventures so most of my pulps are from like the late 40s, early 50s. So this is Fantastic Adventures um, from 1951. But a really great cover. I really like this cover. I'm not sure who the artists are for these ones. Oh, uh, this one, it says 
PF something. <laughs> I, it's, it's, the name's actually cut off. It's kind of weird. Um, and we got Fantastic, uh, Famous Fantastic Mysteries. Just another kind of cool cover. Okay, and then we got a lot of the same titles. Uh, this is Fantastic Novels, and it's like, I like this kind of time-related one. It's kind of cool. I really have to rebag these. They're in kind of these, like, the bags haven't been changed for, like, 30 years, which is a bit long. Uh, and then we got Star Starling Stories. And then um, this is from 1951, kind of a rocket ship, nice sci-fi cover. And we got another rocket ship-y kind of one, but it has some good girl art on it. Uh, this is Fantastic Story uh, from 1951. And we got some more kind of interesting ones. I wish the pulps would stay in better shape. You can see how mangled they get along the edges. This is uh, from Spring 1951. This is um, ten, 10 Story Fantasy. Kind of a cool series and it's like a slave girl that one's kind of cool uh and then we got planet stories this also has a really great cover nice bond it looks like a not a bondage cover but just a kind of cool good girl art cover and then we got startling stories another the seed from outer space and then rocket ship and this one is from 1951 as well. Okay, I'm going to show some more. <laughs> I'm going to pick up, I, I got another stack. So if you don't like pulps, well, I'm going to show a whole bunch anyway. So, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put them kind of like in there. But some of these have really awesome covers. And speaking of which, this is a great headlight cover. So we got... Uh, super science stories. I think, you know, you can't really see. Uh, hopefully it shows up really well. But it's really just a great cover. Again, I like this kind of like, uh, she's wearing a bubble helmet. It's maybe a little hard to see, but she is not, it's not a bubble, but it's kind of like almost like a draped helmet. It's kind of weird. That's in 1951 again. And then we got Fantastic Story Magazine. <laughs> and Got the girl and she's kind of like a it's sort of like a bondage cover and kind of a little bit see-through top kind of interesting i like good girl art so you'll see my bias there <laughs> so uh then we got this one another good girl cover this is uh a merits a uh, fantasy this is a really great one i wish i had like spicy detective or some of the more uh interesting ones from the 30s but i don't have any uh, this is Amazing Stories. Um, and when is this from? I can't see. 1954. This is kind of a nice cover. Um, so it looks like she's like, like on electrodes or something like that. Kind of cool. Okay, and then we got some kind of like demon-like one. Like it looks like Pan or something like that. You got the girl like in distress there. This is Fantastic Novels magazine. And this is again from 1950. And then we got Amazing Stories. That's a nice rocket ship. And the rocket ship's blasting through the TV, which is kind of cool. So I think that was a really cool cover. And then we got another exploding rocket ship in this case. And you got the guy and he's looking through the window and the ship's getting blown up. A laser beam maybe cutting through it. And this is uh, Amazing Stories from 1951. So as you, as you can see, most of my, my collection is from like 1948 to 1955 era. I have, so we have from win, uh, winter of 1952. This is kind of a cool cover. And this is Fantastic Story. A cool one. And I used to have a bunch of these labeled with who's famous or what's special about them, but I, I, all the labels have fallen off over the years. Uh, this is Fantastic Novels magazine. So 
So I'm just going to keep flipping through and showing you some more. And we got we got uh, Fantastic Adventures. I thought this was kind of a cool cover. I like I like miniature people. So he's kind of like a tiny guy, and it's got this giant and giantess in the background looking at him. He's like looks like he's like trying to explain something to them or something. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, and then we got uh, Fantastic Adventures. So this is kind of a cool cover too. Like you got these kind of like giants coming out of the water. Kind of one in the foreground there. And the girl and the horse in the background. So that's kind of cool. And this one's in really rough shape, but still a cool cover. This is Wonder Stories, and the girl's like falling down from the cliff. Good girl art cover. Then we got sort of like the Robbie the Robots kind of cover. This is a fantastic story magazine. I believe this is later. This looks like from the 50s. Not sure. Doesn't say. And then we got Amazing Stories. Again, you know damsel in distress kind of situation another damsel in distress cover they're all sticking together because the bags are so old um is amazing stories you know you got the alien chasing after and the the heroes in the background shooting the alien preventing her that you know saving her um so yeah amazing <laughs> amazing stories um and then we got Fantastic Story Magazine. Fantastic Story Magazine. And this is 1954. And then we got another one, Fantastic Story Magazine. And I'm trying to go through these a little quicker because I realize this video is very long. Um, and we got Fantastic Story Magazine. So I'm going to show you some more. And Fantastic Story Magazine. And this one, I put a price tag on it of $15. <laughs> because I think it had like some special thing. So I'm going to put that on the back. Um, this is like really great cover. I really like this cover. So maybe that's why. It's fant Famous Fantastic Mysteries. It's a really great cover. I forgot who it is. It's probably like some first appearance in this. Or first like writer's first appearance kind of thing. Another early one is uh, that must have had something major about it is Planet Stories. And I'm not sure why this is like, but this is some key issue as well. Because I, I some of the labels stayed, so <laughs> this was a key issue. This is, um, I'm not sure when this is from even, but it's kind of a cool one. Planet Stories. And then we got another, later Planet Stories. The style kind of changed, like in the when it was in the later issues. The early issues of Planet Stories were more the kind of airbrush, kind of uh, like painted style, whereas um, the later style was kind of more like these kind of like uh, I don't know, like digest looking. I don't know how to describe it, but uh, so this is Planet Stories. This is from nineteen doesn't say. <laughs> I can't even read it. It's too, it's too faded. Okay, so then another one that has some key feature. I'll put that on the back. I wish I, they didn't put so many price tags on it. I'm gonna, no, I can't even move all the price tags. But sort of a Cleopatra style one. Um, and this is another key issue, but I'm not sure why. So, yeah, just a kind of cool one. Fantastic, famous Fantastic Mysteries. This one's a really, I think this is a really great cover. It doesn't say it's a key, but I think it's a really nice one. Amazing uh, stories. And then we got startling stories. And last but not least, um, Fantastic Novels Magazine. So this is not my full collection, <laughs> but it is a good taste of my collection. I would say it's about 60% of my collection. So I don't have that many uh, uh, pulps in my collection, but, you know, I have a fair number. Okay, so that was my pulp collection. And 
we got one last question and, and then I'll wrap up this video. I, anyone that has made it all this way, I, through the video, I'm, I'm really appreciative. Um, and I'll final, my final question is from QE. Hey, I'll probably, I, I'll, I probably ask this, uh, question privately, to, but just to make sure, did you get something collectible or comic related on Christmas? So, um, one of the things is when you buy a lot of comics and, uh, you have a family that doesn't know anything about comics, they really don't know what to buy you in terms of comics. They would never pick up a comic for me. So under the tree, I didn't, I actually didn't get that many gifts. I actually told people don't buy me anything because I buy too much stuff for myself already. It's Christmas every day for me in terms of all the stuff that I buy. So, um, I really told people don't have to worry about me too much. Just buy me some chocolate or something. And I kept that pretty simple. So I didn't get any comics. However, uh, my parents, they did try to get me something. They know that I do this YouTube channel and they wanted to get me something to maybe kind of help with my YouTube channel. And they got me this little stand. <laughs> um, so it's like just a little stand where I can put my, like all these videos are being recorded on my iPhone. So right now I just have it uh, leaning against uh, like a box, like one of my comic boxes. But uh, this is actually a more professional way of probably doing it where I have the, the professional stand. So they gave me a, a you know, little stand. So that was my only true uh, comic related <laughs> gift for Christmas. Um, and yeah, nothing real, nothing really that exciting for Christmas in terms of uh, presents from other people. I gave myself way too many Christmas gifts and you will see that if you watch tomorrow's video and my New Year's videos. I open up some pretty major, major comics. So um, I, I have nothing to complain about in terms of Christmas. I got a lot of great gifts. So that is the end of this very, very long video. Uh, only six questions, but took me almost an hour and 20 minutes to go through them all. Uh, because I want to show you so much stuff. I really want to make this a great video because it's one of the, it's my last Q and A of the year and I'll be, you know, starting it up again next year. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have a question, please put it in the comments below and I will do my best to answer it. I'll try to keep it a bit shorter so I won't torture you with such a long winded explanation or answer, but I hope you enjoy, <laughs> I hope you enjoy these videos. And, um, you know, uh, if you love seeing lots of comics, well, I have lots of comics to show. So again, thanks for everyone for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And check out my other videos because there's lots of really great stuff that I show on a daily basis. Thanks again.